Let's quickly bring in Steve Amwachuku, who is a market analyst. He's joining me right now via Zoom. Hello, Steve. Good morning, Nancy. Hi, good morning, um, Steve, and welcome to the program. Thanks again for having me. Now, let's get started. We saw, uh, uh, I would say the market closed almost flattish because 0.05% week-to-date performance, not so strong as it were, but still strong. What do you have to say about last week's performance and uh, where do we hope to be uh, this week, bearing in mind that the MPC uh, was, you know, the meeting, we saw the decisions come through. Uh, did the market digest any of that at all? And what do we hope to see this week? Okay, thank you. Just like you said, the market almost closed flattish, but 0.05% is still relatively a green territory, uh, giving us a rise of uh, 18 billion naira in the market capitalization. Yes, the market is still witnessing uh, low liquidity, which has resulted in low activities in the market, but we foresee a rebound in the market, given the fact that uh, we are coming up, uh, the third quarter is expected. We are expecting an improved earnings for the third quarter. So this week, next week, and the weeks to come, investors will be strategically positioning in some stocks. They expect a very good, fantastic result. So we expect a rebound in the market. Given the fact the statistics we've also read about the rising crude oil, having in mind that the proceeds from crude also reflect in the companies quoted at the floor of Nigerian stock exchange. So we expect an improved earnings coming into forest in forest times and other uh, capital inflows that comes from the uh, foreign portfolio investment will actually improve the market in days or weeks to come. Steve, what do you think about how the markets would look like at the end of this month's trade, which is not just marking the end of the month, but the end of the third quarter? When did we even begin 2021? We are coasting closely to the end of the year. I can't believe that, you know, <laughs> just about three months to the end of the year. So how, how, how would you really categorize third quarter's uh, market performance uh, Nancy, I think uh, I may not be a soothsayer here, but the truth remains that you cannot take away the operating economic environment, the realities available, the insecurity that have impacted the most of these quoted companies. So you can't take away the operating environment for these institutions away from what possibly their books will look like. Uh, but one thing I know for sure is from 2020, when we had lockdown, we have coronavirus and all restriction, uh, Nigeria particularly, or quoted company at the floor of Nigerian stock exchange have actually uh, shown uh, the other side of the market that uh, people continue to, you know, uh, question or query, why is the market performing so well, why the rest of the world are moving sluggishly. So that's is given that the market will actually see what it did last year, which is uh, 2020, but not in that mood of 50% rise. But we are going to see some rebound. As we speak, the market is still in negative territory. Year to date is about 3.7 about or 3.8 loss position. But we believe by the time third quarter comes in, and with hopeful of what fourth quarter will be, uh, with good dividend payout, you will see some equities rebounding and moving the all share index or overall index to a positive territory before the end of the year. Have in mind that we also have this, like I said, improve in the crude oil, which will reflect in the incomes or reflect in the business activities or capital flow, or what you may call liquidity that will also come into the market before the end of the year. Mm. Steve, let's quickly just move over to some other markets like the market, uh, the money market, the treasury bills market, euro bond market. The Ni Nigeria would uh, issue euro bond uh, next month. So I think we're just a few weeks away, $6.2 billion. What, what, what are your you know, sentiments around this vis-a-vis -vis also the rising uh, debt burden, uh, which, which we have. That's the A part of the question. The B part of the question is you mentioned earlier that the market is not really insulated from what is happening uh, in the Nigerian economy. Do you think that the NGX broad index 
is, you know, really gives us a, a broad picture of how, of the resilience of the Nigerian market, if we're indeed resilient, or the fragility or the vulnerability of the Nigerian economy. Because we've also seen some companies uh, quoted making, you know, stupendous profits, some a bit better, some banks made so much money, so some will argue, okay, because of technology and all of that. But how can you really give me an analysis on some of the things I've really posed to you right now? I think uh, let me start from the B part of your question, which uh, kind of uh, defines the realities too. Now, the truth remains that why you continue to see most of these companies, their top and bottom, mostly their bottom line, so impressive is maybe you can say, use the word is a, a, a sort of a weak physical policies we have. Weak physical policies in the sense that uh, most of their hardships are thrown down to the poor masses. The companies, their bottom line continue to rise. They don't care about the reality. They don't care about how the prices of these items or commodities are selling in the market from the industrial sector, like the cement. You see the prices have gone up more than 30, 40, 50 percent. Consumable items, you have find them in the market. The prices are more. They are all throwing back most of this rise in doing business back to the ordinary Nigerian. That's why I use the word that is a total weak physical policies from the current administration. If they have put up some good policies that will make sure they checkmate at rate which prices of these commodities are going up in the market. So it is as a result of weak government policies that would have subtled the rise in prices of all these commodities. That's why you continue to see them make profit. They continue to throw back whatever from the forest or from the cost of doing business. They throw all these costs back to Nigerians. Then the A part of your question, which has to do with other markets in the world, if I, may, if I can get that correctly. Yeah, uh, the other markets which I mean is in Nigeria, the fixed income market, for example, we've seen uh, yields, uh, okay. yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, the euro bond, thank you. Yes, uh, yes, it's still a contagious issue. It's something that Nigerians continue to discuss at present, the rising debt profile of Nigeria. Nigerians have been so reckless, this administration is so reckless in the way they are borrowing. Yes, if that very bond, euro bond of six billion will be successful, I promise you it's going to be successful because uh, the government does not care about the coupon rates they are going to offer to Nigeria. We are borrowing the most expensive country in the world borrowing. We are borrowing, you will feel, feel record that the last euro bonds they issued, we have borrowed over 7.5 to 8% which country in the world can do that when other countries in the world are taking these very lows at two percent at three percent at maximum of 3.5 percent but nigerian government because they are clueless will continue to go to this market offering about 7.5 percent to eight percent to raise this one yes investors will definitely come in they will definitely throw money at you because you're giving them one of the best coupon rate one of the best interest rates in the world so why will it not be oversubscribed they are going to be successful that i know for sure because these investors are looking for where they can get more and more and higher heat that is basic they will be successful in this very forthcoming euro bond but to the detriment of Nigerians, because you are, it costs you more to borrow. Where other countries like Mexico or the Morocco or any other Latin America can go to the same market and borrow the same fund at 2.5 percent, at 3 percent, a maximum of 3.5 percent. But you, so desperate, you are going to the same market and borrowing an over 7 to 7.5 percent. That is the reality. We will continue to have this uh, debt burden ratio burden on Nigerians or burden of the economies of Nigeria. Thank you very much, Steve. Let's leave it at that. Let's speak sometime soon. Uh, next Monday should be on the 4th, if I'm not mistaken. That will be the new, uh, a new week, so to speak, and a new quarter. Uh, looking to, uh, forward to the end of the year, you know, just three months ahead. Thanking God for the last nine months, <laughs> you know. But I'll see you again. Uh, take care of yourself, uh, and uh, thank you for joining us. All right. I I'm worried less of Nigeria. <laughs> did I hear you right? What did you just say, Steve? 
What did I hear? And what I said, worry less of Nigerian situation. I should worry less. Mm. I don't know if I can do that. Of course. You know, I don't know because I really worry too much. <laughs> I really worry too much. Thank you for the I advice. Do. I do too. That's why I'm <laughs> advising you. Maybe we should worry less. Uh, just mm. like I said, this euro bond will be successful, but the implication is on us. Thank you for giving me that advice. Whether I should worry less, because I don't know those in charge of leadership, if they are worrying as, as, as much as I'm worrying, if they can sleep. <laughs> I, okay. doubt, I, I doubt my sister. Anyway, anyway. Let's leave it at that. Thank you very much. Uh, let's quickly take a break. And when we come back, uh, Professor Ken, if he will be joining me here as a development economist, is also a lead consultant at ECOWAS. We'll be looking, we'll continue this conversation, but from another angle, we'll be right back. Don't forget to join us on all our social media platforms. The handles will be put on the screen shortly. <laughs>